This week on Full Circle Florida, a story of second chances. You see the rest of your life going. My dreams are simple. You know what I mean? I want to be, you know what I'm saying, look about it back as my family used to look at me. You know what I mean? The way they looked at me before. I don't want to be looked at as a person they can't trust, and now I'm getting that. My deep dive into prison reform in the Sunshine State, the ministry on a mission to break the cycle of incarceration, and the former Florida lawmaker who's now using facts instead of politics to spotlight the problem we're all paying for. DeSantis versus Newsom, California versus Florida, the primetime debate that happened this week. Who won, who benefits, and most importantly, who really cares? And out of Israel, the Florida-based organization running private rescue missions to evacuate people from the Middle East. I speak with the founder of Project Dynamo, what they now need more than ever. Welcome to Full Circle Florida. You could call it the carnival debate, the ultimate lib versus the ultimate MAGA, Disney East versus Disney West. But whatever you call the debate that happened this week between Florida Governor Ron DeSantis and California Governor Gavin Newsom, you can't call it insignificant. Newsom could very well end up replacing an aging Joe Biden on the Democratic ticket. And DeSantis is still fighting for every poll point he can muster. Now just weeks away from the Iowa caucus. So who came out ahead? Here's four Saunders. Right from the get go. Governors, uh, thank you both for being here. Really appreciate it. It was fireworks in the Fox News stage. You almost have to try to mess California up. And yeah, that's what Gavin Newsom has done since he's been governor. But there's one thing in closing that we have in common is neither of us will be the nominee for our party in 2024. Governor Gavin Newsom, Governor Ron DeSantis not giving each other an inch or really a chance to speak. Guys, I guys, I'm going to let this, a... I'm going to let the debate breathe. The Florida Republican and California Democrats sparred for more than an hour on topics like taxes. He has one of the most regressive tax rates in the United States of America. He's the number three most regressive state. And COVID policy. You were a lockdown governor. You did a lot of damage to your people. Oh. You had more kids locked out of school for a longer period of time in California than anywhere else in the country. You closed down your beaches, your bars, your restaurants. False. It's a fact. The you had were not quarantines. Closed. False. You had quarantines, you had checkpoints all over the state of, Cal uh, of Florida. By the way, I didn't say that. Donald Trump laid you out on this. On immigration, Newsom hit DeSantis for his controversial migrant relocation program. I'm the only guy here that's a border state governor. You're trolling folks and trying to find migrants to play political games, to try to get some news and attention so you can out Trump Trump. And by the way, how's that going for you? while DeSantis bashed Newsom on California's population losses. So I was talking to a fella who had made the move from California uh, to Florida, and he was telling me that Florida is much better governed, uh, safer, better budget, uh, lower taxes, all this stuff, and he's really happy with the quality of life. And then he paused and he said, and oh, by the way, I'm Gavin Newsom's father-in-law. Both politicians likely to walk away with high marks from their supporters. Former President Donald Trump's campaign, meanwhile, took a shot at both of them with his pre-debate statement calling DeSantis, quote, thirsty AF. Quote, instead of actually campaigning and trying to turn around his dismal poll numbers, DeSantis is now so desperate for attention that he's debating a grade A loser like Gavin Newsom. OK, let's bring in our political analyst, Dr. Susan McManus. So we'll get to the bait in just a second. But while those two were talking over each other on primetime television last night, there was a major scandal developing here in Florida, still under investigation. Christian Ziegler, the Florida GOP chair, he's basically the head of the Republican Party in Florida and the husband of Bridget Ziegler, who's the co-founder of Moms for Liberty. These two are essentially the face, along with Governor DeSantis, of the anti-woke sort of campaign, parental rights, preaching moral values. And now it comes out that Sarasota detectives are investigating allegations of sexual battery against Christian Ziegler. Uh, Governor DeSantis has already stepped before a microphone and said that Ziegler should step down. Now, innocent until proven guilty, and there's still a lot to sort out here. But this smells really bad, and I'm just wondering, what are the potential ramifications for Governor DeSantis? Well, first of all, in this country, you're innocent until proven guilty. And people are becoming more and more aware of that as we see accusations fly everywhere. In the middle of a campaign, you would be really foolish to take one side or the other on this. You have to wait till the facts emerge. And obviously, for Republicans, they will see it differently than Democrats. It will be viewed right now. The judgment will be taking place already on a partisan basis. 
Is it optimal in the middle of a campaign for the chair of your party to be accused of something like this? Of course not. It was interesting that Governor DeSantis already sort of didn't want the heat, said step down, resign, go deal with this issue. Um, all right, we'll see where that goes. All right, back to the debate. Did anyone really care about this debate? Uh, this debate Was it consequential? I, the half of me is thinking that. The other half of me is like, well, it's an interesting concept. What if we had more of these one-on-one -on -one debates instead of 12 people talking over each other? You know, have DeSantis go against Ramaswamy, Haley versus Trump, if he would show up. You know, do that. It's easier to understand. But the problem with that is who goes first, because there's also an old adage, the last two that debate might get more publicity or the first two. So then you get into how you do all those selections. One of the things that you really observe from these two uh, candidates, well, potential candidate right. in one case, uh, <laughs> and the debate was simply that moderators these days cannot control mm. the candidates or the people on the debate stage. They were talking over each other. Uh, it was really hard for a person to follow what was going on. One would talk, but you could hear the other yeah. one in the background, and nothing was done. And each of them calling each other bad names. You know, my grandmother used to tell me about people who would use the old adage of liar, liar, pants on fire. That came to me last night because both of them were doing that they to each other. see the world in very different ways. Dr. Susan McManus, thank you for being here to help us sort it all out. Appreciate it. Still to come on Full Circle Florida, getting out of the war zone, the Florida-based organization leading the rescue missions and what they need now.